Um, now, is this picture the same as this picture? We do have this overlapping with this. That seems good. Mm -hmm. But do they overlap completely? Mm -hmm. Here, I guess it's still not working. This top nitrogen is supposed to be bound to the back nitrogen, but here the top nitrogen is bound to the front nitrogen. OK. So does it look like these, uh, this has an optical isomer? Yes. We still haven't proven it, because we haven't tried, said, tried to do two flips in a row, which might possibly come in. So this is the frustrating aspect of this. It takes time and judgment to learn how many flips is enough to try. Uh, but I'm tired of this. All right, so I think I'm going to start to be confident that these really are optical isomers of each other. They're not the same. Uh, but if you have time on the test, you just try a bunch of different possibilities and see if you can find any way to flip things so they're going to look the same. Um, one thing is you can't just try flipping around the vertical axis. You've got to try flipping around one of the in and out axes as well to be sure. Of course, if you're short on time, you just do the bet. You uh, do uh, maybe a, a smaller number of flips and then take a guess. But to be sure, you have to try flipping around one of these axes as well. So it helps to actually identify the axis that you're flipping around. Notice what I didn't do here is just kind of draw the whole picture at one fell swoop and hope for the best. I just did one atom at a time, labeling the atom that I was focusing on and comparing it to the axis. Um, this, this really is hard. It just takes time. You can't expect to do it quickly, uh, especially the first few times. OK, so that's how we rotate around an axis that's not just in the plane of the board. So it helps to write down what you're rotating around and what angle you're rotating. OK, so we decided that this has one optical isomer. We decided there was no cis or trans. All right, and there was a bunch of homework problems that involved these bidentate ligands. This is an important skill to have. Um, in general, it's easier to have optical isomers when you have bidentate ligands than without bidentate. After all, suppose that none of these nitrogens were connected. If none of the nitrogens were connected, obviously these would be the same thing. Right. So it's clear that putting in the connections makes it more, it makes it easier for two pictures to be different from each other. Uh, but basically now we've gone through the skills for doing the isomerism. So the key skill is, the hard part again is the optical isomers. And the key skill is write down one picture, write down your mirror, write down your mirror image, and then try rotating it. And you've got to try more than just one thing and rotating around more than one axis to be sure. And again, you can see this is not the type of rotation you can do in your head, at least not without practice. You have to have to write down what it looks like. Um, I think most of the stereoisomerism problems are about these octahedral structures. So this is uh, really the basic approach that you would use for these. These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm. Or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you.